<laughs> Hi. Welcome back to the next level show. We have a full house like once again. The trio is back, baby. What's happening? I kind of wanted to do an awkward silence at the beginning and just smile at you guys. So that was on purpose. That was on purpose. Did it make Got you it. feel awkward inside? No. Just a tad. I was like, uh, space. someone saying something? <laughs> it's like it's like Gabe's your go. 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 Um, it's like mm, the little flex yeah. of the neck. <laughs> um what's up boys how you guys been it's the end of the new end of another week this is technically the end of my week like actually like in podcast time but also real time because you know time is man-made relative. And, yeah and relative of course but we're going to massachusetts tomorrow which is yesterday for everybody else if you're keeping up um so yeah, I, I, I fit, I fit in a, I, I don't remember the exact number because some people didn't show up and rescheduled or whatever, but it was close to 50 sessions in three days. So Holy shit. I was so tired that I'm actually not tired anymore. Is it the whole 180? I like, I went all the way back around 360. and yeah, it's like a 720 at this point, 540. I don't know, but yeah, because I obviously I don't qualify for like PTO yet. Not that I would necessarily do that for a couple of days, but um, I was like, "Fuck it!" Like I'll just I'll just manhandle my schedule. I'll fit everybody in in the first three days, and it was literally like five a.m. to six p.m., five a.m. to six p.m., five p.m. to six p.m. I was just like, "I survived." That's it's wild. fine. Yeah, That's it's insane. Wild. Yeah, dude, I can't do that um, anymore. No. Actually, I think I I'm think being dramatic. I... I don't think fifty sessions is really accurate, but. It was a ridiculous number. You get the point. Mm-hmm. Um, it's probably closer to four. But yeah, so we're going to Massachusetts. Jen's brother is getting married. And it's going to be our first like family trip, I guess. And Oliver's first time on an airplane. Um, you guys know how I feel about fucking airplanes. So I'm going to try and not send my, my negative energy to him while we're on that fucking death trap. And... Yeah, only we'll safe. What are you goes. talking about? Yeah, totally safe. Statistically totally speaking, safe. Exactly. Statistically speaking, it is. You're 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 all good. No worries. I know. You've been to Massachusetts before? Or first time? I have not. No. And actually, like, I'm excited to go. I'm excited to get away. It's going to be a little bit of a break, whether it's a full flown like air quotes vacation or not. I'm excited for that part, but. I've never been and I want to go back so that I can actually go to Boston and hang out and see the sights. And especially because as lame as this may sound, I've put in probably like eight or 900 hours into the game fallout four, which takes place in Boston. So I, in a weird sort of way, I kind of like know my way around. This guy. I know. No, no. I I want to see like the actual places. Uh I'm they, right there with you because when I went to LA, same thing. I was just like, oh, it's like Grand Theft Auto uh, Five. It's this is here, that's over there. It's well, the same thing. It has the same the same feel, but yeah, same yeah. layout. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but okay. Not without getting too nerdy, they actually went around and did like a Google Google Street View of like all the roads. So like the the, the roads, unless otherwise needed to be adjusted, it's all fairly accurate to like any landmarks that are there. Yeah, but it's always been a place that I wanted to go to regardless of the game or not, but we won't have the chance to go, but it'll still be time away. It'll be nice weather. Um, and it'll be a little bit of a break from like the, the busy schedule. So. I'm yeah. It's happy. a nice, it's a nice place. I, I would recommend uh, anyone to head over there. The cool thing about it is like, you can really just walk, park your car and just walk the entire city. Everything is just relatively close, good walking um, time. And it's, it, it, it's, it's a good, good stuff over there. Yeah. As long as you don't get right. attacked by Raiders. I was there in Boston last year, actually, and it was still during COVID. It was like somewhat open, so I didn't get to do much. Went to a couple of restaurants, bars, and then I went to go have lobster rolls, which is very like popular over there. So mm-hmm. definitely very you gotta good. have one. That was kind of the best part. The best food that I ate in Boston was those lobster rolls, just because it's different, it's fresh. The you know, seafood over there is better water all that good stuff it's cool i mean you'll have a good time it's not my favorite city to be honest it's uh oh. kind of, yeah it's really not uh, i'll be ruined. honest so uh for the people what is your favorite city Boston, yeah in the united states i don't know you oh wow wow you're the one that... 
<laughs> weird flex, but okay. <laughs> and you, and this, this is your this call. Is I don't know. And just, and just in the West, <laughs> <laughs> in the East Coast, <laughs> just in this sector, or we were going, we're going international. Are we pulling that card out. <laughs> it's like you just go like to Canada. That's it. You just once, <laughs> just move a little bit higher. Um, no, I think my favorite city, I guess. <sighs> hmm. I think I'm going to be very lame with in, in the United States and say it's between, uh, I would say, honestly, Miami. Yeah. yeah. As far as the city to do stuff. Now, I've been to New Orleans. I think New Orleans is really cool. Um, I went through Mardi Gras, so I got to experience the life. And that's it's a different it's it's very different than I imagined. And uh, I've been to LA, I've been to different cities in California that weren't major, necessarily major cities. Um, New York, obviously, Manhattan. Manhattan's cool. Obviously, right now, I wouldn't go back anytime soon, but it's, uh, yeah, as far as to do things, I would definitely say Miami. As far as the variety of food and culture, I'm, I love the Hispanic culture. So there you can kind of get a taste of different countries, in my opinion. So I'll be very lame. I'm in Florida. I'm pretty biased. So I must say Miami. Uh, I'd probably say between Dallas and LA. That's if I'm excluding New York City. Mm. It's between one of those two. I had a good time over there. Yeah. No, I think LA is cool. It's very, it's really like you just walking around. It's kind of like that New York feel where you're just looking up at the tall buildings and stuff. Yeah. But it's very different. I think I would prefer Manhattan over LA personally. Okay. I have a very limited selection to choose from, uh, but I think New York City for me, um, just because it's so different from Cape Coral. Oh, night um, and day. Yeah, it's like a whole different world. Um, but yeah, just going around and you know looking all the all ass buildings and people being rude and yeah, it's a great. Time. Speaking <laughs> speaking of totally different world, uh, last time that I asked you this, Mike. Um, you were talking about watching the What If series, and yeah. you were up to watching the whole Party Thor. Oh uh, yeah, you, I saw Party Thor. Um, did you finish did you finish the whole series? The, so I I am watching this. Actually, I have a complaint to file with Disney. I'm watching this on an Xbox One, uh, which I know ancient technology by now. <laughs> the The Disney Plus app on the Xbox One is like spazzing the fuck out. So anytime I try to open it, it like, it does this weird, like open close thing. And it basically like shuts down my console. So mm -hmm. I haven't been able to watch anything past party Thor, unfortunately. And I'm too okay. lazy to like uninstall, reinstall, guess at my password, re-enter my password, try again. Guess my password. <laughs> Same password can't be used twice. Fuck off that whole thing. Or even use so, your phone. Uh, can you do it through the phone? Yes, you can use oh, like it. watch it through my phone. Yes, bro. I have a, I have like a, I have like a seventy-two inch TV in my living room. But that's a weird flex. Okay. Yeah, my, but you're just saying that you're not gonna, you're, you're not gonna go through the trouble. I'm just saying, like, I'm, if you don't want to go I'm through gonna, that I'm trouble, gonna, I'm gonna sit here like this. Yes. Or I can, I can sit like this. But you just said you're not gonna do the whole going through the trouble of doing it. So then. I'm just giving you an alternate. I don't. Alternate. I don't know. I, I don't want to watch it on my phone. No. Okay. No. Makes sense. I'm actually. I'm actually going to start watching it, guys, because my couch came in this week, and I can finally watch it on the living room. And that's where I have Disney Plus is on that TV. So I'm going to watch it there. I'm going to finally kick back. It's been weird. Two weeks and a half of not having a couch, dude. It's very. You were just weird. sitting on the floor. Sitting on a box. No. No. So I would use this chair, the one I'm recording on. I would roll it out to my <laughs> living room. And I would sit there and I watch the UFC yeah. fights and I'm just there chilling uh, uh, in the middle of this open space. Uh, but no, I'm super stoked. It came in, fit perfectly. This is why a good tape measure and knowing all these dimensions is super clutch. Um, I made a guess, dude. I literally gambled with this couch. I'm like, I think it's about this much feet and this is how much the wall is. And I just, but it worked out, guys. It worked out. It looks, it looks dope. And it's comfy. So Where'd I covered you... it up. So I took pictures of it and I sent it to like my brother to make sure like he got it. And then I posted the one I sent him uh, on Instagram. But then I instantly, bro, it's all covered up with like, these big queen blankets, two of them. Pop, pop. That way my dogs don't start ruining them again. So yeah. Where did you get the couch from? If you don't Rooms mind me to go. asking. Oh, okay. 
Nice. They had a good. They had a good deal. I mean, they had the kind of the material that I wanted. I wasn't going to go leather anymore. If you have a dog, don't do leather. If you let yep. them on, and the thing is that like I can't. I, now I'm being more like, hey, get off, and they get on, and I'm letting them only come on when I'm on there, so I can watch what they're doing. Versus they get the spasm, so they start running around and they start uh, playing, and then Qatar is like almost sixty pounds, so she's like all that weight and she's like trying to like move around so this one i bought it like more of a microfiber type material it's a different type so it shouldn't it should last a lot longer when it comes to that and i got a bunch of warranties for like the pee on it or whatever so i'm good the couch is all covered so i'm excited nice we went with leather because babies vomit and leather is easier to wipe it off this is true so yeah. yeah we have lots of like scratches and stuff because dogs and cats doing their thing um but the leather's clutch when he projectile vomits at 2 a.m on a monday morning this is true it makes it super this is something, simple to this, clean is something up. this is something to take in consideration now yeah I, I try to keep them covered for the most part make them make this obviously better choices i would have done that if i would have known the, the what would have happened it's just like katara was like she grows so suddenly so it's like over the course of time this happened and before you know it dude it's like it's like when someone I'm assuming this goes on, like since we're a fitness podcast, like you start gaining some weight. Let's say ah, I got I got this new job. I'm married. Went back to Chico's. And it's like over time, you notice like my belt buckle is not. And then before you know, it, oh, shit, like I'm 50 pounds overweight. It's like kind of like that. That's what happened in my couch. In other words. Just, uh, are you did you even think about just going like full Hispanic and putting on the plastic uh, cover on it? Nah, dude, I, uh, that's to me is so pointless, bro. <laughs> when people do that, I know it defeats the whole purpose of the couch because it's still comfy uh-huh. with the blankets. You know, it's like you still yeah, feel yeah, no, like, I know, I know, uh, like a bed. But <laughs> when I, I had what, dude? I, I had this relative, man. I I disliked her so much. I hated going to her <laughs> house as a kid. It wasn't even my purse, like my blood relative. It was like she was uh-huh. married to someone on my grandfather's side. Yeah, she was super anal about her house, dude. It was that lady that would literally yell at the kids just for like walking to the bathroom, dude. Like, I swear to God, it was just the worst. And uh, yeah, no, I, I she had plastic on her couches. I was like, dude, what the fuck is like all squeaky, dude? And it's loud and it's it's bigger. If you don't, you get hot, you get sweaty. Oh, yeah. it's, it's stupid. Yeah. It's, anyone, I'm sorry for anyone that does that. I just think that's a completely waste of time. Personally, I just think you're stupid and it's just not even like worth it <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I i don't know why what's the point of that oh uh, yeah um but yeah uh, should we get uh gabe super excited to have you back it's kind of been awesome too just with mike but it's uh, finally we finally got the schedules lined up yes trios back okay. no more dialogue i think that's why even when i did like the solo episode think twice or once mm-hmm. or whatever they it's different because these type of conversations it's good to have them back and forth because obviously i can only think in whatever i've experienced or what i may forget certain things uh might try to do a good job with the analogies and they weren't bad <laughs> but they weren't gabe status they weren't got the gabe level so yeah we, i, I don't i think uh, i don't know are, I, I can't I, I don't know how it can be replicated i can barely replicate it myself so <laughs> There's that. <laughs> it's like I got like, like five five good ones that I'll keep using again, just like have them in my memory. Exactly. Now. It's just right there in my back pocket. It felt like I was uh freshwater, freshwater fishing with saltwater tackle. Just <laughs> just didn't work. There you go. There he is. There it is. Get him next time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but now for anyone that's like listening, maybe there's someone that's a little bit new and you're wondering what's all this confusion, what's all this craziness going on. I forgot to mention at the beginning of the episode, we do have show notes that our, our co-host Mike does a fantastic job at doing. You can go down. And I think depending on how we have them set up, I, I have to double check YouTube, but they should create hyperlinks. I know on some of the other apps like Spotify, it does create a link to, if you just tap that number, or you can just literally move the the line to whatever point close. Can we, um, but it, sorry, go ahead and finish your thought. But yeah, just for the listeners that just want to kind of skip to different points, we are going to be covering the topic of muscle soreness. We have made episodes in the past, but we're going to revisit this because it is something worth talking about. It's been something that's been fresh in the topics of my clients and just overall stuff that's been on my mind since I've kind of switched up my training frequency a little bit. So I was like thinking like, 
this is a good time to like kind of discuss it. I, I know there's a lot of confusion. I've actually changed certain opinions about this uh, over the course of years. I've been going back and forth. So I think it'd be a good time to revisit this. Yeah, it's always a good time. I mean, it's like anything, right? You you have a thought, a you know, stance on something, and then you get some more information, and then you're like, you know what? Actually, uh, I think a little bit differently you now. Yeah, and I think that's as important. I mean, I just another things I always I always say like, have your you're always trying to do the best to kind of come to uh, some consistent ideas and beliefs and strategies or whatever, when you're doing your fitness stuff, there are some general truths, general truths. And we always say general because literature and science and data is always going to be important. I like to look at it from a very objective standpoint, looking at stuff. Okay. This is kind of what this says this is what this is out telling me. Uh, other people are, are, are talking about this, but there are values in other things. So I think that it's very common still. I, I it's, it's, it, we're in fitness. So we talk about a variety of different things, but it's still very prevalent with new people or people that are just haven't had this conversation or have heard anybody talk about this, that the, there's a confusion around uh, the topic of muscle soreness. Where does it kind of fall into place? Where it's its value? What is its principles? Is it good? Is it bad? So we're going to cover all that for you guys. Or even look where maybe they're just, like you said, somebody that's new and their exposure to the topic of muscle soreness is from some, I don't know, someone on the gram or on YouTube or something saying, you know, you got to just kill yourself and you have to be sore. Mm -hmm. So, or the opposite direction where it's like, you know, you should never feel that. I mean, who knows where they're, where they're coming from um, with, with this topic in mind. Yeah. There's a still, it's very glorified still in certain uh, niches in fitness. It's still going to be like the, how hard can you train and how much can you beat the body up? And then there's going to be other ones that just train way too soft. And then they, they're never ever sore at all. And they're not pushing themselves and they're not making progress. So I think that either we always talk about the ends of the spectrums on different topics that they, it has its value. And there's, there's kind of usually a sweet spot for depending on who we're talking to, there might be that person that is naturally lazy, doesn't push themselves in the gym, and they may need to bump up the intensity, which is going to cause, you know, soreness. And then you have the other extreme that maybe you're going always chasing that soreness, but maybe like not experiencing that soreness for a bit of time and still training in a moderate intensity will lend itself better. So before we, well, before we get into all those little nuances, muscle soreness, what is it exactly? What's in, and what does this mean for you? That's maybe experiencing this. And I'll kind of just cover real briefly and I'll let the guys chime in. Muscle soreness and inherently is obviously that, that sensation you get after maybe you're new, you've trained something, uh, you've done a new program, you started with a trainer, or you, uh, you just kind of get, push yourself a little bit more than you normally have in a while. Maybe you finally are in the mood to get after it for a couple of weeks. And you're going to experience that like, ooh, that like that next day you wake up and you know exactly what you trained the day before. It's very common. It's um, it's something that's very, very, very common in beginners because typically it's very hard to gauge where you're currently at. And some people, it's very easy to overdo, especially at the beginning of your training, uh, of your training career or whatever your process. So basically they're micro tears in the muscle. They're just, they happen typically through resistance training, but they can happen through other forms of exercise, such as just doing anything that's outside. Let's say if you did yard work and you never do yard work, your back might be super sore, for yeah. example, because muscles that you're using, maybe you moved all day. Maybe you're, you've been cleaning the house and it was a deep clean. You were jumping, you were getting up and down, uh, you know, your ladder or whatever, cleaning the fans and picking up garbage and throwing it over and just all this crazy stuff that your body, you just normally don't do on a week to week basis. So it's anything that's kind of outside and they're just typically micro tears in the muscle. That's usually where you'll experience um, this. And in some cases it can be a little bit of inflammation. And sometimes if it's like joint related, it can be a little bit of inflammation in the joints. So those are things to uh, keep in mind. Boys. Dr. Mike. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, I, th I think you covered it pretty well. I always like to frame it like this. Like when you're exercising, you're, you're intentionally, causing trauma to your body in, in, in a very acute, I don't know if acute is the right word in a very minor way. It's not like you're intentionally tearing your ACL, but you are breaking down some muscle fibers. And then, you know, if, if you were to just think of that logically, if you're tearing down muscle fibers, if you tear down enough of them, it's going to fucking hurt. It's going to be a little stiff. 
there's going to be some swelling in that area, which is what, you know, hypertrophy comes from air quotes. Uh, is that a sound effect that we can do? Yes. that's yeah. fine. Okay. Perfect. Now it is. I, I got, I got, um, I got to make a clip of it. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, it's, it's going to be a little stiff. It's going to feel a little, a little painful. Um, and then to what degree is, I guess, something that we'll talk about more elaborately, right? Or should we just talk about it now? I mean, since yeah, I brought it up. About it now. But I mean, yeah. oh, I'm waiting for Dr. Mike to break it down. Well, <laughs> um, I think of it as like a scale, right? I mean, zero being, I don't feel anything that wasn't a very good workout, which doesn't necessarily mean that it wasn't a good workout, but, and then to the, you know, other side of the scale, a 10 out of 10 soreness, I've literally had my quads so sore before that walking my dog, if he moved in an unexpected way, I almost fall over in pain because I'm bracing against a 60 pound dog pulling on me in that direction unexpectedly. And like, if my child touches my quad, it makes me wince and, and like grab my leg because it hurts so bad. Like that's more towards the side of overtraining. That's like too much trauma. There's the middle zone right there in the, 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 the four to six range where it's like, you feel it and you can tell you did something, but you don't have limited range of motion. It doesn't hurt to the touch. You can still go and do like a body weight squat and you can definitely tell there's something going on there, but it's full range of motion and you're not making any funny faces while you're doing it. And that's probably more or less what we're talking about here when we're talking about like a desired amount of soreness, right? Yes. Okay. Just so we're on the same page here. Just to give you a little quick Google, uh, you know, translation, a little bit more uh, professional. It's just basically microscopic tears, damage to the muscle fibers. Very, very small, minor. You're not going to actually, you don't want actually to tear your muscle. That is, that is the bad, but they're microscopic tears to the muscle fibers themselves that cause that soreness, that sensation that, Ooh, I feel a little bit tight today. And it's usually stiffness that you'll feel like when you stretch the muscle a little bit into its full range of motion and length and position, you can feel where you may have done a bicep curl or you did chest or you did legs. Um, anything that kind of moves it is just, it's, it's tight. They're little micro tears. And it's just usually uh, also a very common one is the DOMS effect is the delayed onset muscle soreness. It's usually the one that you feel maybe not the day after you did uh, a, a workout, but you'll feel it maybe the, it's day two, you know, day three, you know, it's, it's very, uh, those are different types of soreness. Um, people used to think that it was due to lactic acid buildup or whatever, but it's not necessarily that it's, it's all bottom uh, boils down to these microscopic tears from a training session. Yeah. It's, um, when you were talking about, you know, uh, working out so hard, your quads that you're just, you know, you, you almost feel like you're going to fall over. I can admit, I think just about damn near everyone can relate to, to, to that point of, or that feeling at some point in time. Um, what always jumps to me is, is when I train chest so much that or so hard, that I try to put on my deodorant and it's just not a good time. Uh, I feel like my, my <laughs> yeah. chest is going to just pop off my, uh, my, my, my bone or my rib cage or something. So it's just, it, you know, you definitely don't want to go to in that direction. You don't want to go at a zero either. It's just finding some kind of common ground. Now, how can you, because you don't want to go all the way to the 10 or close to that range. I mean, it doesn't mean that it, you won't get there by accident. It could happen. Like it's typically happens when um, either you start a new program or a new phase, or you, you know, you go into a new rep range, maybe a new exercise. Let's just say you've always squatted, but you've never done Bulgarian Swiss squats, or you're always barbell benching, but you never do um, dumbbell benching. So just something new will kind of like get you towards that area, especially if you say, okay, well, I typically bench X amount um, on the bar. I can do the same amount on dumbbell. And just because it's, it's something new, it'll, yeah, exactly. Like shaking his head, like, no, <laughs> not a good idea. You know, it just, it, it's hard to gauge it. And because it's sometimes hard to gauge, you will lend more towards that end of the spectrum when you need to just be as careful as you can and just say, okay, let me just try. I always like to tell people, you know, Hey, let's just try this one. Can you do, how's it feel? I would rather go too light than too much. I'd rather under, you know, undersell it than overreach. Um, in my opinion. Um, because it's easier to add a little bit more intensity or more weight or more reps as opposed to take take anything away. It's it's done. You can't. What, what are you gonna do? Go back in time? I don't it's have like the salt. Yeah. There you go. So that's exactly what I was thinking, man. uh, Gabe's analogy always sticks in my brain when I think about this. And I've used this with clients is saying that, you know, you're better to like, you know, not put enough salt than over salt your food because you can ruin the dish versus you can always add a bit more. You can always add a bit more flavor to your food. So run around the water. Like how how do you, how do you take the salt off? 
<laughs> what bro, it, it reminds me of the time it reminds me of the time that i really <laughs> over, over seasoned my steak and it's because the the top of the seat the steak seasoning fell off and it just oh bah. so i had enough meat so i'm thinking what if i just spread versus just, i could have just picked that with a spoon or something and maybe saved it dude so salty it was just ridiculous it was just way too much it was like i ruined the steak there you go oh, Point. this is before you threw it on the grill Yes. So I would imagine if that happens, you would take it, like, you know, pick it up and try to like, maybe like dust it off with your hands and take some and put it on the other side, perhaps, and put it on like so a brand that's, new plate. So that's what, so that's that's what, what I did. I literally and took still. it and I, and I put it to like a bunch of, because it was just that high in sodium, I guess. But yeah, yeah, just an example that you can over salt it and just ruin a dish. If I would have just adjusted that and made it less and taken that, completely taken that seasoning out of the plate without yeah. mixing it. I probably would have had a chance. So don't oversalt your workouts in this case. <laughs> um, but uh, basically we covered what it is exactly, what muscle soreness is. Usually what it means is it can be like, in this case, we use joke around about oversalting, but it means that you may, you may have overreached. Um, and in a lot of cases, this is what it is for most people after you've been doing it for a while, or even at the beginning, you may have just done a bit more too much than you actually needed to. Um, it also could mean, like Gabe said, that you tried something else, a different variable, and that's okay. That happens, and it's it's not necessarily a bad thing. We'll kind of get into like good or bad type of sorenesses and what does it mean, but but basically that's what's happening. You probably like push yourself out of homeostasis, your body's natural comfort zone. You maybe did a way did a way bit too much, or you're starting a new program, or just adding more volume, or you've progressed in some way. In this case, either weight, reps or uh, sets. So you may have done something different. You just change the variable and then it just progressed your body. A good way to, we, we talked about, it, it's like kind of hard to gauge in a way. Yeah. Especially at the beginning, when you have someone new, you have, you're not working with it, regardless if they're a beginner or not, it's hard to know exactly where their point is, but you should be able to find that, especially as coaches, we should be able to find that very quickly in the next couple of weeks uh, or next couple of sessions, just basically because we have them on a set type of program with a, with a set amount of volume. This is what I'll do with clients is that it, I'll slowly uh, change and add and flip variables around that are not just to one spice up the workouts, make them more exciting, something new to look forward to. Maybe, Oh, we have this exercise for the next, like, uh, next month. And it's, uh, just little changes there so that their body will continue to progress. And maybe that first week of that new program of them trying each workout that they do, they may feel the soreness, but by week two and three, they're, they're already pretty acclimated in this case, adapting to what we're doing. So we are at a good place. If they're sort every single workout, every single time, I may just full blown. Like I have to be accounting. Like, is this person even sleeping, eating enough, hydrated enough? Are they overly uh, stressed with their life? So I have to make those adjustments accordingly, but it's very rare at this point in my yeah. career that I, I have a client that's just banged up all the time. It'd be kind of almost rare if that's the case, if, if, if that is the case in anything, right? Because even if like they're, you know, re sleeping terribly, eating and, and not eating correctly, not hydrating enough to be sore all the time, that's, I don't know, that's, that's pretty crazy. No, dude. I mean, uh, for example, like last week I switched up my training. I added uh, two days of more, but I split up my, my working mm -hmm. book, but it's just now kind of more muscle focused, a little bit of a bro split, not fully, but kind of separating my muscles just because I wanted to, to condense the workout times instead of having a longer workout, I'll have slightly shorter workouts. And first week yesterday, I was pretty much like kind of sore the whole week. And every time I would do, and it wasn't like a crazy amount of volume. It's just that the, the focus on each workout changed. And so the intensity is there by this week. I'm feeling so much better. I don't have that level of soreness. Some people would be like, Oh my God, like, is this not, is this not even, is this even working? But, um, the goal is, you know, we'll kind of talk about other forms of progress towards the end, but, but basically, yeah, this is like normal first week is you may feel something like you, Oh, I did something and yeah. that's okay. Um, that is in this case, a good indicator of a, of, of a good soreness or a good level of soreness. It wasn't ever to the point that it, it hindered me from doing other workouts the rest of the week or my daily tasks. Um, this is a bad thing. If you're so sore that you can't, like Gabe said, 
you can't even put deodorant because it hurts so damn much or you can't like drive your car um we joke yeah. about this because this is something that we used to think like yeah we're we're getting gains man but it, it, we probably like fucked up so much there that it was just like literally no point to go that crazy there was literally no we were just literally broing it out and just being just off the walls yeah so what happened <laughs> basically exactly that and what happens when you can't when you can barely put on your your deodorant are you going to make it to the gym are you going to do anything when you get to the gym if you could barely put on deodorant like what what kind of way are you looking to to, to put up or, or or move if some such a mundane task is hard for you to complete yeah. so what that does is prevent you from going which slows down your progress which which brings you know just delays everything so that's why going to that extreme is not ideal because it just it, you just can't go out there you can barely even move like you well mike when you were talking about you know when you're walking and you're you know walk, shaking and you know looking like bambi out, out there you know it's it's hard to move even though that's probably the best thing for you to do at that point in time but it's just it, it it's it's just not ideal and just slows you down when you think it would make you go faster you're like okay yeah i'm, I'm, I'm going in the right direction but you're really not it's you're going in the opposite direction more likely yep. if you go and to the extreme there's also another component the, to this that that just came to mind that i need to take note of the time for show notes um this this is also directly influenced by your ability to recover from whatever workload you're doing at this point so and you know we all approach things mostly from a full body style of training every once in a while i'm sure we all have clients who are like okay chest day leg day push day whatever but even more so conducive towards the body part split side of things where people are just hammering in the intensity and yeah, you're so sorry. You can't put deodorant on, but like, I don't have to worry about that from my next training day. Cause it's leg day. So I don't even need my chest for that. But even past all of that as an argument, if you're doing so much volume to chest, two legs, two shoulders on a day-to-day -day basis, and you're not dialed in on all the other components as far as sleeping right and eating right and recovering and drinking water and all these other things that we talk about so much it may even be to the point where you're getting so sore that you can barely move and it's not even giving you the results that you're looking for because you're not hitting all the other points so that also kind of lends itself to you know just the average person if you're an average person with av average goals i say that in a, in a very kind way um and you're not super strict on food and you don't always sleep the best and don't hit all these other points, then getting super duper sore is actually probably sending you in the wrong direction anyways. So it's not something that you should necessarily seek out because it's not helping you at all, really. <laughs> no, I think yeah, that there's, I, yeah. well, I wanted, I wanted to say that we, we've talking with Sal, something that he always uses as a great example. And one of his main core programs from the mind pump guys, their maps anabolic program did this very good breakdown when they were doing the marketing videos back in like 2015. I mean, they're old, old videos. That was just him. And the way he explained this was kind of a very big paradigm shifting moment for me, which completely elevated the way I trained and, and how I trained my clients. And for those listening, this might be a very big, big paradigm shifting moment for you, but the way we want to just use that example is just know that, your body has a particular limit, you know, you're each, you know, depending on where you're at, depending on how much sleep you're getting, how much you're eating, stress, all these other indicators in your life, your body has like a, a, like a cap, you know, of how much it can, how much stimulus it can have. And if you completely blow it out of the water with your workout, you just completely fry yourself. You have, you are sore as hell. And you think, wow, that was a fantastic workout. Uh, but what you don't know is that you probably overrode your body's ability to re actually adapt to that workout you just did. And th the name of the game isn't just survival or recovery from brutal workouts. You want to be able to adapt from those workout sessions. So you want to just go slightly above your body's natural ability to train or maybe in that moment, like push it just a little bit out of its comfort zone. You don't want to be to the point where like we're talking about, we're joking around, like your knees are buckling when you're walking after a leg day It's just your, but your muscles are so fatigued and depleted and just banged up. Um, you will 
recover from that workout, but you won't necessarily always come back stronger. You'll be resistant to the punishment, but you're doing so much that your body has no time to build upon that and actually build muscle and get stronger. You may adapt from the soreness, but you're, you're constantly pounding the body. When we know that if you do just enough, your body will can actually adapt from the workout. Thus your soreness level may be under control, maybe like a day or a couple hours. Once you eat and you stretch out, boom, it's gone. You come back to that workout again, and then you hit the, you hit that session. And now you're lifting five more pounds on a couple of lifts, or you're, you're actually progressing over the course of months. That is adaptation. You want to see that with minimal soreness. And if that's happening, you are in the good zone. And the bad zone is if you're, you have killer sore workouts, like you're so banged up, but you're barely seeing any progress outside of that. Like you're not looking any necessarily any better. Your, um, your weights in your, in the performance in the gym, isn't getting any better that, you know, where you're kind of like, you're probably doing way too much. Your workouts are like, it's more than necessary. You're overly stimulated. So a good breakdown is remember you want to make sure you're adapting in your workouts versus recovering from your workouts. Yeah. It, and you, you, when you said that it kind of, what jumped into my head was when you work out, you want your body, like you mentioned to adapt and put all the resources into getting stronger, um, than how it was before your workout. But instead your body's saying like, holy shit, we're really fucked up. Let's just go and allocate all of our resources to just getting into working order, being able to walk properly without falling over as opposed to let's get our quads stronger. Let's get our legs stronger. Let's just do this. No, it's just saying, it's just saying, Hey, let's, we're, we're, we're fucked up. Let's just uh, try not to be fucked up. Mike, Mike, you're going to say something. I like that. <laughs> it's like, don't be effed up. If you're going to be effed up. Um, I feel like I've been swearing way too much in my day to day. I'm trying to be good, but then it just comes somebody, out. Somebody yesterday at the front desk was, Somebody that you, you, you know, people, you, you meet people like Carissa that, that you just don't ever hear swear or you don't expect them to swear just based on their demeanor. Mm -hmm. She was like, how do we unfuck this? And I was like, come again. What, what did you just say? Like <laughs> so much. And so that just came to, came to my mind when you, when you said, I think said there's that, a difference yeah. though, between using like saying like, that's an example of how to maybe put like an exclamation point or underline or a bold in a word. Oh, as yeah. opposed to just being vulgar for the sake of being vulgar. Yeah. Like me. I'm, I'm just, just kidding. I'm yeah. just kidding. I literally have no this. filter. I just. Yeah. When almost. you said that, I was like, the fuck? I know. I know. I was just like, gave some. Like, I like, know. My face. When like, you were like, don't F this up. I was like, the fuck is this? I know. I come back to this shit. It's, it, it sounds weird. Like I've been out for a week and I come back to this bullshit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's like, we're men. Let's talk like men. Um, no, yes. but yeah. But basically in a nutshell. It's like we, we've talked about in many episodes and we're describing this just to kind of recap this point is your body's perceiving signals in everything you're doing. So we want to make sure that you're not sending you such a overpowering signal, which all your body is registering is like, I just need to survive and just not die basically mm -hmm. versus when you send the appropriate signal, the appropriate amount of training stimulus, you're actually going to tell the body to build and get better. And that's where people I have a clients that have mentioned this to me personally, and I know our, one of my clients that just supports the hell out of this uh, podcast. He's, he tells me it's again, a game changer. The way he thinks about training is completely just shattered his paradigm. And I, I want this to happen to you. The listener too, is that you understand this point that it's, it's not always a, a bad thing. If you're sore, if you have soreness happen, but it's not necessarily a good thing. It doesn't mean you're having good workouts and he can come into a workout and feel like, damn, he's, he's pushing himself. He's trying. Cause this is another thing. You'd still have to try. You still have to bust your butt in the gym. You still have to put an effort, but once you get out of there, you should feel a lot better when you let, than when you came in, uh, when you leave, you should feel a lot better than you came in. And it's not such a, it, it's a point that you see yourself continuously get better without you slaving away and just dying. Every time you come to the gym, you're actually seeing progress because why else is everybody fucking taking time out of their busy day to go work out because they want to see progress. No one fucking goes to the gym 
to feel sore. Like what? Like <laughs> it makes no, if you think about it that way, it makes no logical sense. You go to see results and whatever that is, maybe it's mentally, it's physically, but you want to see results. Um, the only time I would say you should have these brutal kick-ass workouts that really just left you like on the floor, drenched in sweat, is if you're trying to, uh, if you're trying to have this, uh, hold on one second. There we go. Phone call came out of my end. I don't know if you guys could hear that. Nope. Um, people always have the best time to call me when I'm doing this. Anyways, you don't want to do. Guy. It's like, it's not even like anything urgent. Um, I lost my chain of thought. What was the last thing I said? Wait, hold on. I just want to just uh, chime in really quick. So if you go there. For <laughs> oh, the- oh, wait, 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 before I lose my chain of thought. Before before I lose my chain oh, there of you thought. go. I try if to you, fill this space. The, yes. The only time that you should feel this level, this is how, how sharp I am today, guys. The only, level, the only time you should feel this crazy amount of soreness and maybe drenched on the sweat, passed out, you're just like, oh my God, I died. Is if you're doing something mentally, you want to check yourself, your mental capacity to kind of uh, push through and have mental toughness. And I, there's times in, in certain career paths that require this because you're not doing this for aesthetics or you know just overall health. You're doing this because you have to build a resiliency to overcome very hard things outside of there, or maybe you're someone that wants to test yourself from time to time. And that's the only time that I feel that these brutal kick-ass workouts that leave you dead have its merit. Go ahead, Gabe. Sorry. No, no, that's, that makes sense. Uh, no, I was going to say, so if you go there with the per- with the intention of just feeling sore and beating yourself up, is that like a, are you like a masochist? Kind of. definition? Like, In a way. Would yeah. you say? I would say that's leaning more towards the side of self-hate than self-love. Yeah, that, is, that is correct. In a certain type of way. But I will say this from being a client of Jonathan's for a couple of years and him kind of changing the way that I look at fitness. Um, soreness, after I got used to the whole process, you know, we're talking about a couple months in, not the first month or two. Once we kind of got into the swing of things, he would switch up my program every like three weeks, four weeks, whatever. And I started to notice the trend of like that first week, new program. Once I had a really good idea of like what weights I was using and we were hitting it like really close to the money on the very first week, it became something that I looked forward to that first week of the new program. I'm like, I'm actually feeling it the next day. And then the second week, I'm feeling a little bit less, but it still felt like a really good workout. Maybe we even added weight or I felt more controlled or whatever. And then by the third week, I was like, I was the master of the workout. It didn't feel like I did anything, but it was still a kick-ass workout while I was doing it. And then we would switch it up again if there was a fourth week or whatever. But once I kind of got into that like flow, that felt like a really good gauge of like, I could tell my body was progressing because we were doing the same exercises week in and week out. And it gave me a direct like feedback from the week before. I was like, oh my God, my, my back was so sore after this workout last week. And now it's not really that bad. I must be making progress. And then third week, I was just like kick-ass workout, super easy, but not easy at the same time, super easy level of soreness, whatever. But that was kind of like my experience with it. And I, I see the same thing happening with like my clients and I kind of like explain to them that's what's going on and whatever, but that's kind of my two cents, five cents. Yeah, no, that's just an explanation of why it's, it's ideal to work with not just a coach, but, but a good coach, because they'll keep you on that track, keep you on this plan in order to not, um, I guess, fully adapt to whatever workout, whatever weights, whatever movement that you're doing and, you know, switch it up when it's appropriate. I mean, you should not switch it up every single day or every single workout. Uh, you know, that's what do you, people try to say that's muscle confusion and you trying to, you know, that's not what you want. You do want some form of adaptation. You do want to get better at the movement. Um, but you also want to get into that sweet spot, which it sounded like you were in where it's, uh, as soon as you kind of like get to the point where you're comfortable with the movement. Okay. Let's just, now it's time to switch out, which is generally give or take three to what? Five weeks. Yeah. Three more to or five, less. three to six weeks, something like that. Crunch crunch wants us doing like every month or so which I usually do three weeks. Um, so it's just adding an extra week. And usually I just switch up like a variable, like, oh, it was barbell squats for three weeks. We're going to do front squats this week or whatever. But, but you're that you, effect. But you're watching the client and you're seeing where they're at. So some people might yeah. do the whole full month, some people five, other people three. So yeah. it's very attentive to the client and their needs as to how they're progressing. Yes. And then I would even say this, it doesn't even need to be a new exercise. It could be a new rep scheme. It mm-hmm. could be new tempo. It yeah. could be different rest times. 
same rep scheme. Oh, that's Some cool. variable changes Kick and you will ass. get a different result. Yeah, it doesn't it's have to period. be like, oh, I did back squats last week. Now I have to do leg press or I have to go and do front squats. Any amount of progression, any change, any variable that is a change is obviously going to elicit some sort of response. So just I think this is, I think you guys touched up on transition beautifully to kind of when and how often you should be sore. This is, this is a common thing that like we talked about every three to six weeks, you're seeing some type of change. The way I do it is just to keep it super simple. Each month, the client can expect some change to their workout program. Like I said, for the mental piece, but that whole thing about muscle confusion, I know we've heard about it a whole lifting career and it's just complete. Stupid. And it's definitely not needed in the in your in your program. Your muscles do not get confused. Um, if you are doing that too much, you're not al- allowing your body enough time to re- truly adapt. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. So, I'm sorry. So I started so I'm laughing because you played that, but then I'm laughing that you're looking away from the camera to stop laughing. <laughs> so I'm laughing. Well, cause I'm also trying to keep my chain of thought here and I do, for those that don't know, bad. I also keep, uh, no, I, I'm, I truly enjoy this. I'm actually going to get a soundboard for the podcast hopefully soon. So we can have some cool, uh, animation to the show, but no, it's, it, I'm reading kind of like what I have jotted down so I don't lose my chain of thought, but yeah. Animation. Uh, yeah, it's animation. No. I don't know. Like radio ish type, you know, vibe to it. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah, whatever the perfect term for it is. But um, but yeah, just I usually like to make these switches because muscle confusion in and of itself isn't necessarily valid because we talked about signals. We talked about adaptation instead of recovery. You want your body to be able to adapt and fit and actually learn what it is that you're doing. This is what Mike was saying is that by the week three, he was doing the same exercise that he did in week one, but now it feels a lot better. It doesn't, it's still hard, but it's not to the point where it's overbearing and he's actually been able to maybe lift more weight than he did week one because his body learned the pattern and what the skill it's trying to attain during that time. And that's why also not switching, you don't, people will get so confused that they feel like they have to have a completely new blank slate workout, which you can, I mean, if that's something you care for, but the way I like to program is to have very similar movement patterns across the board for the most part. And what I'll change are the small, maybe you set, uh, the amount of sets, the rep schemes, maybe the, we talked about tempo, uh, and all these little things that can make the workout a bit more intense and change it. People are blown away when you just give them, let's say two minutes for doing this exercise for this amount of reps or whatever, then you switch it. You just, you didn't change the exercise, just change the rest period. Boom. Like it's a full new adaptation. They're progressing there and their body is getting a little bit of that novelty. Um, but over time, you want to keep certain things consistent because you want to continue to see progress. I have a buddy at the gym that his joke was he had a, he had a client that asked him why is like is kind of leg extensions towards like on his on their leg days is almost a, a pretty good staple. And I think the client's uh, uh, you know goal was to build their quads. And he's like, well, how much are you lifting on the leg extension? He's like, this much weight. He's like, well you still haven't finished the whole stack. So there's still progress to be made. And it was just a simple like joke, but it just goes to show there's still a lot of progress to the amount of strength that you can obtain. Um, obviously there's cap outs, of course, but it's, it's just to put it into perspective for you. So you're just feeling like, ah, uh, I need something super new to break through this plateau. You may just need to change one or two things, or maybe this just manipulate something in the workout itself. And you're going to continue to see progress, Mike. The- <laughs> You just reminded me of an experience that I saw or had uh, earlier this week. Maybe it was Monday. There was a guy deadlifting. We have uh, lifting platforms with uh, pads to wear and rubber weights. So you can like drop the weights. If you're deadlifting, it's not as loud. It's actually really awesome. Um, not to plug in my super awesome gym crunch fitness on Pine on the road, but <laughs> there was a guy using metal plates for deadlifts. And I was like, Oh, Hey man, like respect the four Oh five, but you can't use the metal plates on these. Cause it'll, it'll, mess up like the the little area over here and he's like oh man he was like i can't fit as much weight on the bar if i use the bigger ones and i was like respect bro like just just keep doing what you're doing <laughs> like, like i'm not even i'm not even gonna take that away from you like just just keep going bro like, it's, it's like fine. it's like it's like perfect logic but do you think it would damage the platform i mean i don't think it shouldn't damage the rubber i don't especially know if, especially if, especially if you have 
the main rubber plate as your base plate, it lifts it slightly. You're not necessarily touching the full floor of the that plate. That would probably be a thing. I don't know. He, I think he worked his way up to like five plates. And oh, he was doing it. I mean, he wasn't doing like sets of 12 or anything. I think he maybe get like four or six. Whenever, like, that's more distracting me than like anything else in a gym. If there's somebody super fucking strong and they have good form, that's like my eyes were like, I'm trying to like pay attention to my client. I'm like, that's fucking cool. <laughs> um, but he wasn't like slamming it on the ground, which is kind of yeah. like the saving grace. He was controlling it on the way down, which is a little intimidating now that I'm thinking about it. But, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, I was like, dude, like, just, I'm just, just pretend this never happened. Like, just keep going, please <laughs> do it for me. <laughs> well, to, uh, kind of go down to the last point, guys, uh, we have different forms of progress. We talked that we were going to cover this at the end. It's just stuff to kind of shift your focus. I made a post the other day, basically saying that like muscle soreness doesn't necessarily mean good workout. And I put good workout in quotation marks. Um, Things you want to be focusing on is obviously other avenues, other aspects of your body, your mindset, your, your strength, your performance in the gym. You want to make sure that you, we made, we covered it in, in various briefly in various uh, topics is you want to get stronger over time. You want to make sure that you're actually moving more weight than when you started. If you were lifting literally the same and you're someone that's intermediate beginner, even if you're someone advanced, you should see some type of uh, progression going upwards if you're following a sound program, if you're actually taking care of the other things, um, if you're lifting the same or less, then it's like, it's probably means, and you're, and you're like, all your experience is like achy joints and soreness. You may be doing a little bit too much. I would definitely recommend tapering back a bit. And you pr- most likely 99.9% sure that you're going to start seeing the progress go back up believe it or not. So it's not always about how much you're doing, but you want to make sure that's a very big indicator. If Are you getting any better in the gym? Yeah, it's a factor, but not the only one. And, it, and if all you're doing is chasing soreness, then you're more than likely not progressing as much as you could. Now, let's just say you're sore all the time and you're, and you're saying, but I'm still adding more weight to the bar. I'm still progressing. Okay, fine. You're doing that in spite of being sore all the time, not because you're sore all the time. So you would, to your point, um, scaling back just a little bit, you can probably um, move forward as in a, in a much faster way. Correlation isn't causality. Boom. Is there sure. causation? Listen, it's already been said. Don't, yeah. don't take this from me. <laughs> um, I just like, you guys, would, you guys usually clown me for when I make up words. So causation, I, I saw my ca- shot. Causality. I'm going to look that up later. Either way, uh, my closing thought would be that soreness a good progression would if you're following a structured strength training routine that's actually thought out and put together in a good way i would say soreness going away over time is actually a good measure of progress because that means that you're adapting and you're doing things in a smart way so kind of like what i was saying before first week definitely feeling it second week a little bit less third week good to go that to me in my brain and what i try to preach to my clients is that that's that's your body literally adapting. That's exactly what should be happening. That's what you should be experiencing. So if you're not getting sore, that means you are getting the desired result. Your body's responding. So, you know, what it comes, what comes to mind when you say that dude is just, um, if you can, if you can actually bump up the weight or do that extra rep and not be sore, that should make you excited because the fact that you can get away with more and not feel anything after the day after that's actually a very, uh, positive in that you're doing everything else right, you know, because you did the effective dose to be able to then do better in the gym that next session. So that's something to be keep in mind. Like I know that when I'm like really sore, like to the point, like when I'm training with a friend and we're just going after, it, we're just we're just kind of broing it out and being silly. But it's like the next day you're like, oh god, like every like, to the touch, and I'm like, yeah, I just completely did way too much that I needed to do. And I'm like, shit, I know I'm going to have to recover from this and I'm really not going to expect to see any crazy progress or muscle building uh, from this, but I don't want to scare listeners either from trying hard um, either. So I do definitely want you to push yourself. You will get better at gauging. This This is something that comes with time. You will still overreach at times for fun and it will, it will happen. Not always. It's not going to 
one, a couple workouts that that happens is not going to mess it up for you. You just have to keep um, kind of knowing that I've said, it's not even like a, an actual scientific fact, but it's like, I would say about 80 to 90% of time of your workouts, you shouldn't be banged up and sore. You should actually feel pretty good the majority of the time and leave that 10 to 20% where you get after it, you push yourself and you say, you know what, I'm going to really test myself. Um, and a way to avoid this is not going to failure on like every single set. I would say maybe the last set of each workout, depending on what you're doing, you can push yourself pretty close to uh, mechanical failure, which is just your body's form. I mean, the form when it starts to break down, that's something to keep in mind is that you can get there until you can't complete a proper rep. I think that's a, an effect. That's a very easy way to translate that over to the everyday person lifting, whoever's yep. listening to this right now, just put, let yourself go. Even if you said like, okay, I'm going to do 12 reps, but you got to 12 and man, like you just let yourself keep going and see like, dude, I got 16 reps. So definitely you were maybe under now, you know, I can maybe bump that weight up next time. Um, I think that's a good way to make sure that you're not caught slacking because I know it's very easy for the people that like, maybe don't like lifting. They start kind of doing, they start playing it way too safe. And then they're like, they're on the other end. Like we talked about at the beginning of the episode, but I definitely allow on, on the final sets. I allow clients to am wrap it until I see them yep. finally break it down because I'll be surprised. Like, dude, you got like four or five other reps. I'm glad we, we allowed this set to be kind of that determining set. So you can continue to see progress and the other, just to kind of wrap up my point with the different forms is body composition, whether that's muscle building and or fat loss in that, in that same kind of niche, like you should be able to see uh, physical changes, clothes, uh, the way your, your body is shaping and actually looking, those things should be improving over time as you're making progress. That has nothing to do with how sore uh, you are in the gym. Word. Are we, any other thoughts on this topic? I think we did a pretty good job. I have thoughts off topic. All right, What's, let's do it. What is it? Um, I finished squid game and I have not, I haven't even started. I, I didn't think the ending was lame. I liked it. And I look forward to is the it, impending season two. I, I is it dubbed? It just or so is, it, a... is it dubbed or subbed? Uh, I mean, I, I watch anime, so I watch anything original. If it's subtitles, that's fine. I, I, no, I'm just asking. Um, like, I, again, I haven't seen was, it. I, I do want to. but Yeah, you can. You get, uh, there is an English like dubbed version. Um, and kind of mm-hmm. like we were talking, people were saying like the writing's bad or the... Uh, there's not an emotion or anything like that. And it's probably just because it's subtitled um, mm-hmm. and then it's not the people actually talking if you're doing the dub version, but I liked it. Um, I thought it was a really cool show. It's an interesting concept. And given the premise of the show, there's really only one direction it can go. So yes, it's an expected ending, but at the same time, there was still a little bit of a twist. It was still pretty good. And I mean, I, I enjoyed it. it was it the best show I've ever seen? No, but it was pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, I gotta yeah. watch that. I'm behind. I haven't seen that. I still haven't even seen the the Dave Chappelle show uh, special. So I gotta hurry up and catch I watch that. that. Yeah, no, yeah. I need to. Hopefully, t- uh, I don't know. Till tomorrow. Well, there you go. Closes out, boys. Do your thing. Uh, Mike, I got a question for you and John. You too. You can join answer. in. No. What do you call a haunted chicken? A what a chicken? Haunted. Haunted, a haunted yeah, this chicken. Is, this is Halloween themed. I don't have a Halloween themed joke though. Uh, haunted well, mine chicken. Is. I'm gonna ch- say ch- 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 chicken. Well, it's, it's called a poultry geist. I was way off. Okay. <laughs> um, Do you have anything, Mike? Yeah. Uh, why don't trees like math? Why is that? Because it gives them square roots. Damn square roots. Shit. Get you every time. Yeah. Cubed. You don't want those. Anything cubed. Well, listeners, I hope you guys <laughs> enjoyed this topic and the return of the trio, even though Mike won't be able to join us for our Monday Mindset episode. He's on his trip to Massachusetts. Um, but me and Gabe will hold it down for you guys and bring you some fire content as always. And if you guys can support the channel, leave us a five-star rating and review. is always super helpful. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to a new YouTube channel. Give it, hit the subscribe button, thumbs up to this video. 
and share this with anyone that can benefit from this content. Uh, check us out on social media at the Next Level Health, uh, Next Level Show. My personal account is at John Alva Fitness. Mr. Gabe is at Prime and Glory. And Mike, he's at Mike Nellis PT. And until the next one.